Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about planetary imaging and processing. We're going to go on an 830mm journey to the sixth planet. So stay tuned. All right. So first what we want to do is download a software called PIPP. Once you have it, we're going to select our source video for this, our capture. And I have it here in this directory for me. I saved it as best Saturn because I am an artistic. I think it's the best Saturn video ever, but uh, that's not me to judge. So this is what we got as a still frame as a reference. And what we're going to do here is go down to the bottom and select planetary. This is a planet we captured. If you got some other things like uh, a close-up of the moon or a full disk of the moon or a full disk of the sun, you're going to want to select those. All right. So let's go look at some of the processing options and input options here. Um, you may want to pause this and, re and have your setup pretty close to this. Make sure object and planetary is uh, selected here. Go down to where you see cropping. I like to crop my frames in a little bit closer because it's a lot of black when you take a, a still of a planet. Plants are relatively small, but this is personal choice here. All right, for output, make sure you select AVI output format. And you're going to want to create a folder for where you want this uh, output of uh, PIP to go. Well, in essence, what we're doing with PIP is that we're taking the video of the plant that you captured and we're going to align everything up and recenter it. So if it drifts across the field of view, this will recenter it. Or if you have a manual alt task mount, it's going to recenter it for you, just like if you had a equatorial tracking mount. And even myself, I have an equatorial tracking mount and I go ahead and use PIP every time. It makes everything a lot cleaner. So in this one, I have a long video, 74,000 frames are captured. It's a lot of data. So um, this is gonna take a minute or two to process and we're gonna rejoin this when, to, uh, when it's done. All right, so it's did its thing and uh, we're gonna go ahead and go on to the next um, stage of our journey here. And we're gonna, um, use a program called auto stacker to stack the best frames. So this is what the PIP does. It centers the, the video for you. So Saturn's nice and centered in us in our field of view here. As you can see, the video I had, I had to bump the gain up quite a bit. It's very noisy, but you're gonna see uh, through the magic of stacking frames, the noise will go down dramatically and the signal is gonna get boosted to a level you, you wouldn't have thought possible uh, just by looking at this. But this is actually good data. Um, and, and you'll see once we get further on along how, how good this is. And uh, there's nothing like looking at Saturn in the live view, it's something else. Um, I captured this just at opposition on, on 8.1 so uh, the rings were uh, brighter than usual the sun's hidden directly on it so this is um, it's going to show pretty brightly when we finished up our, our process here so let's go back to uh, open up auto stacker it's a free software all the software I'm using today is free uh, so we're going to open up our pip alignment video that we took all right now here we are Open that guy up. So this is a pretty neat software. Make sure planet is selected. If you're doing surface, uh, hit the other one. Now move on to the next window here. We're gonna uh, apply our reference markers here. And I like to use 24. 24 seems to be enough for most purposes. Um, I rarely ever exceed that, maybe if I'm doing surface, but planets, 24 seems to be a good number. And we're going to hit this button here and place all those alignment points that's going to decide to determine quality. 
So the essence of stacking, what we're going to do is have this software run and analyze the video frame that we have and pick out the best frames and show us which ones uh, the atmosphere has um, distorted to a degree where we don't want to use those in our final stack. So it's going to do the analysis. Uh, this takes several minutes to run depending on your processor speed and the amount of data. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and look at this and see. So this is the final analysis that I ran. And as you can see um, in the histogram below, everything above 50% is a lot. So we're going to select for this one 30% 30, 30 of the best frames. Um, that's that little green bar there. And uh, once you stacked it, go ahead and um, save this uh, as a stack of how you want it. And we're going to open up another program called Registax. And this is going to um, really bring out a lot of the detail here. Uh, it's almost like, like magic. So we open up Registax here. We're going to select our stack that we just did in Auto Stacker. Here we are. Open that up. So this is actually pretty similar to what Saturn looks like in the eyepiece. It's got this, uh, at least for my 100 millimeter refractor that I got the data on, which is actually not that big of a telescope, if you think about it. Uh, it shows up like this. It's a little bit uh, of a faded, muted yellow green tone right now. Um, but you can start to see the Cassini division there. And um, what we're gonna do is, um, personal preference, I like to level this one, this Saturn. Um, but you can treat it however you like. So I'm just going to click on this little arrow button and kind of shift the picture around to where it's level. And uh, there you are. So it's leveled there. And now the next treatment's pretty cool. Um, we're going to get rid of this green yellowish cast on here and go for the true color of Saturn, especially at this time of the year. It's pretty nice. So what we're going to do is do what's called an RGB, red, green, and blue balance. And um, this is going to really transform this picture um, to the next level. It's a powerful tool. It's not 100%, um, but I find that um, in most cases it works pretty effectively. So here's the histogram that we're talking about. As you can see, the blues, the reds, and the greens are not uh, converging and closely uh, aligned with each other, They're not in harmony. So we do the auto balance button here. Um, this will clean all this up and really transform the Saturn picture. And just like that, you've gotten the Saturn all cleaned up, showing its bright white rings at this time of the year. It's at opposition. And uh, the Seeliger effect is in full swing. That's when the, the sun is hitting an object directly on and the somewhat obscure stuff is becoming brighter. So the next powerhouse that Registrex have is called Wavelets. So these are the, uh, the six different panels here we have on the left. These uh, really sharpen different areas of the picture. And it's just a matter of uh, playing with each, each one of these in order and walking them back and forth. Um, and there's no exact science to this. Um, we all as astronomers walk an image back and forth when we try to focus it. So we find what's the the most harmonious balance, plus the sharpest picture. It's no different with this. So you're gonna take these sliders over. The first one's probably the most dramatic one. And as you can see, it did already enough to clean it up. And now you can see the Cassini division clearly there. Uh, but we're gonna play with this some more and see if it's uh, better or worse. And often enough, I tend to go back a little bit because um, I don't want the image to be overtly sharpened or too hard. Sometimes the smoothness is is really where you want it to be. I find it more uh, pleasing and more satisfying that way. Um, but everyone has their own preferences. And of course, it depends on the data that you have too. So um, I was fortunate enough to have a, uh, a five minute long video with 74,000 frames to play with. So there's quite a lot of data that we can do. And we're gonna bring up the little zoom in sliders to kind of see what the bandings of, Ju of Ju or Saturn is doing. You can see that uh, the color separation is more apparent now in the Northern Hemisphere. You got a big belt there in the center that's, that's yellow versus the more brownish and greenish appearances. Now we're bringing some of the detail in the bottom in the Southern Hemisphere, the greenish blue is coming out. So just play with these a little bit, maybe walk it back too far 
and then when it's too far then you start going backwards i tend to do it that way i want to go past where i think it's good and then walk it back to where i think it's better um, so you want to go almost exceeding the limit of what is pleasing and then go back to when it's better that's where i find you get the most uh, the harmonious balance going so it's just a matter of walking them back and forth not exact science here um, I'm sure if you've hit on a good uh, preference here, you could probably save this and then it'll be automatically available to you next time. Uh, I just find that, you know, it, this is actually one of the uh, more enjoyable processes here. I like to do it individually uh, myself, mainly every time. It doesn't take that long to do it and um, I have some satisfaction in doing this. So here you are. I think the uh, uh, well, your next thing you got to do is do all button here. That's very important. You're going to apply this same um formatting to every single frame that you've stacked and now this image is ready to save um and that's really it guys um this is how you take uh, a so-so <laughs> video saturn which is very grainy as you saw we stacked it we stacked the best ones that we thought had the best chance of getting us a final image that is pleasing and then we'd really transformed them in registax and uh I think this one is good enough for the gram. This is good here. We're going to post it. All right. So, um, you know, I thank you all for uh, joining us on this uh, journey here to Saturn processing the image.